Hello there, I'm Juliana Michaels, and I'm excited to be back sharing how I use the Charcoal Color Swatch Collection by 49 and Market to create a sympathy card. I also used the same process to create three more cards that I'll share at the end of the video. Now let's get on with the making. The supplies I'm going to be using are from the 49 and Market Charcoal Color Swatch, and I'm going to be using the Charcoal Frame Set, the Acetate Assortment, the 6x8 collection pack of papers, the charcoal laser cut elements, and the rub-ons. And I might use the stitching rub-ons as well, but I'm not sure just yet. And now I'm just going to get everything kind of organized here. I like to put my um, die cuts and ephemera type pieces into little trays like this. Uh, it just makes it a little easier for me to sift through and find what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna put the acetate pieces and the frames into these little trays. And these trays are just lids from storage bins from scrapbook.com. Here I've, what I've done is cut a piece of cardstock down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm gonna use that kind of as a template to help figure out how everything would fit onto uh, the card. Cause I'm just doing the standard card size and I'm just gonna kind of see how those pieces are gonna fit there. And now I'm just gonna kind of play around with some of the different frames and see how they might layer onto the card. And now I'm just gonna sort through some of these acetate pieces and just pick out pieces that I think I might want to play with or use on the card and just kind of see how they fit and this is always just kind of a process of playing around and trying to figure out what I want to use and what will look good together and kind of seem like a balance to to my eye so you're just going to kind of see me here kind of play around with things a little bit, seeing if I like any of these ideas or not. And as you'll see, I kind of go through pieces, try things, don't like them, take them away, put them back, and just kind of keep fetching around with it, as I like to say. And thought I might want to use this doily piece, but it just seems a little too too large and it just kind of takes up a lot of space there. So I'm gonna go to some of these other die cut flowers and now I, then I kind of thought of the idea of layering some of the acetate pieces behind the laser cut elements just to add another layer of interest. So here I'm just gonna Picking through, finding different shapes to see how they layer and look behind this flower piece. And the tweezers are just kind of a little bit helpful picking up some of these little pieces. Of course, I'm going to add a butterfly. So I'm not sure about that one. Seems like it gets a little bit lost on there, but. And then just kind of keep playing around, finding different things to layer behind the flower and then kind of decide on some rub-ons to fill in some of the open space behind there. So I'm just cutting out a couple of those and figuring out where I want to place them. And then I'm just gonna trim off that little piece of that lace element. And now I'm gonna start figuring out what pattern paper I might wanna put behind here, because I'm not gonna stay with that solid white cardstock. I just was, again, just kinda using that as like a size or a template to figure out the size of things. So now I'm just gonna kinda see what papers, the 
rub-ons will show up on. Obviously, they're not going to work on something super dark. So one of these lighter color papers is definitely going to be what I'll use as a background here. So I'm going to settle on this one and here I'm just going to trim that paper down to um, four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I end up kind of cutting this so that I keep the butterflies in the middle. You kind of saw how I trim off the top and the bottom there. And now I'm going to use a little bit of temporary adhesive to just hold that frame in place. Again, just gives me time to kind of think about the placement of everything. Um, always takes me a while to kind of commit to, to things. So I like to use adhesives that don't stick permanently until I'm totally ready for them. So now I'm just gonna get those rub-ons in position there and kind of playing around with their placement. And now I'm just using this little shaping tool from Sizzix to help uh, adhere the rub-on to the background paper. And while these are like two totally separate little rub-ons, kind of put them together to create like a border along that side there and to fill in some of that open space to be opposite the little cluster I'm creating with the laser cut and uh, acetate pieces. So now I'm going to go back to kind of futzing around with all the little laser cut pieces and I thought I'd use that tag but then I kind of realized that it's just uh, looks like the background paper so it doesn't really do much of any had anything there so now I'm just kind of going back through all the little elements and looking to see if there's anything else to kind of fill in and put behind there and I find this little like stamp type frame so I'm going to layer that behind there and then kind of play around with that little stamp seeing if I think it's going to work somewhere and I'm going to go find some more butterflies because like I said I don't that little white one just wasn't really showing up much so that little darker one seems like it fits better and yeah, I really want to make that little stamp work, but it's just not, it doesn't seem balanced anywhere I put it. It just seems, it's not pleasing my eye, so. And now I'm going back to the rub-ons, and I pick out this one that says one day at a time, and it just, a friend of mine just recently lost her mother and just was really kind of thinking about her as I was creating this card and when I saw that sentiment I just kind of thought it was perfect for for what she's going through right now and so I'm just trimming that down using my paper trimmer and I know you you know you could also use scissors to trim it down but I just prefer to use my paper trimmer so that it's straight. I guess a little bit of a type A personality there. So now I'm just looking again to figure out some more layering with the card if I want to add a little bit of another framed element. And so I'm just going through and looking for a darker color of paper to contrast that light color that I have behind the uh, main focal area there. So I kind of settle on this gray paper. Kind of go back and start, continue working on different elements and decide on this kind of more of a moth. I 
and um, now I'm just using my liquid adhesive to adhere the different layers together and then continue just assembling the card. Here I actually thought I had the acetate backwards. It was when I laid it down, I thought, oh no, I glued it onto the wrong side, but I actually had done it on the right side. So thankfully the glue hadn't dried just yet. So I was able to kind of peel it apart. And then this is kind of where start committing. So put down, actually glue, start really gluing everything down and always a great thing with the liquid adhesive is you have a little bit of time, a little bit of wiggle room to move things around before it dries. And then with the sentiment, I'm going to uh, just add a little bit of dimension here with some one millimeter foam adhesive. So that just will kind of pop that up just a little bit without adding too much bulk. And I'm gonna add a little bit of some foam adhesive to the back of the moth as well. And then I also decided to add that little bow down at the bottom there with the flowers. And I'm gonna add a little, another layer of foam behind that moth to kind of keep the levels even. And then I'm gonna add a little foam behind the flower to add some dimension to that as well. So now I'm going to cut that background paper down to the four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then now I need to trim that light gray paper down. So I'm going to very carefully trim off like an eighth of an inch on all four sides. And then I can just layer it there on the top like that. The last thing I'm going to do here is just add a little bit of ink blending with some scorched timber distress ink to the edge just to kind of help it stand out just a little bit more and then I can adhere that to the back of the card and with that the card is complete. So I actually kind of used that same formula to create three more cards. I you know, went through and took one of the frames and then selected some of the floral laser cuts and then layered that with one of the acetate pieces and then just built up from that with different other of the laser cuts adding some sentiment pieces and um and then some more rub-ons into the background to just kind of fill in some of the open areas and then layer different pieces of the pattern papers behind them so so on a couple of them, I just used the one piece of pattern paper and then just lightly inked the edges with that scorched timber. And then with the another one, I did another matte layer like I did in the video, just contrasting a darker color behind that lighter color so that it would kind of create more of a frame. One of the things I always like to think about when I'm trying to figure out the placement of elements is kind of creating a triangle so that it helps kind of keep your eye moving across the design. So, you know, on this card here, where we've got the sentiment and the butterflies, it kind of pulls your eye along. And then you also, you know, have the flowers here that kind of pull your eye around and almost, you almost get like a circle effect on this one even. Um, this one here, I feel like you kind of definitely get more of a triangle effect, but some, either that triangle or circle, it just kind of keeps your eyes moving around a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, having a little spot that's more, you know, white or open like this helps kind of give your eye a little spot to rest. Um, same thing here, you, know, you kind of have a little bit of a movement here so that your eye kind of follows things around and um, kind of moves, a, get your eye to move across the whole background of the card and so that you take in all the little elements. And, you know, the same thing with this one as well. One thing I do kind of 
challenge you when you're looking at these cards is to find something that I kind of tried to hide a little bit on a few of these cards. And I just wanted to see if anyone is able to find these little hidden things that I added in, kind of tucked them into the card. So not all of them have it, but three of them do. So kind of see if you you find them as you're looking at the cards. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed following along as I created this card and how I used those same steps to create three more. You can find a list of the 49 and Market products I used in the description box below. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend.